Scott Easton was my best friend. And to think of putting on a symposium about Panikar without Scott around is unimaginable and sad. But that's the message uh, that we get from all of this and that we've always gotten from Ramon is that we have to go out and do it ourselves. Young Chan, you hit the nail on the head this morning. Panikar had the vision and Scott had the language. It's up to us to have the practice to put this into practice. And I'll give my talk at the end of the day today, and that's part of the intuitions that I understood from Panikar. Michiko asked me to read Scott's abstract. Our returns to English in Orbis's Opera Omnia. It will be important not only to translate his words, logos, into English, but to transpose his insights into the idioms of today's dialogue about ultimate values. All too often, modern science tends to provide the prevailing horizon of intelligibility, mythos. People simply believe in the facts, methods, applied techniques, and materialistic worldview of modern science without noticing that these too may be matters of belief. If we seek to turn the contemporary intercultural scene from an arena of perpetual war into a forum for dialogue and collaboration, we must recuperate the humanum the realm of fully conscious human life, precisely where Panikar claims the divine and the material world meet in person, in us. Is the encounter of religion and science to remain a slanging match between narrow-minded reductionists and closed-minded fundamentalists? Or can we envision a reconciliation? Here the much maligned humanities become crucial if only to catch the poetry of it all. As the wave-particle non-duality ga galvanized 20th century physicists, so Ian McGilchrist's recent book, The Master and His Emissary, suggests that a further non-dual vision may be emerging in contemporary neuroscience. And here I will leave you with a Such neither one nor two scientific insights function as homeopathic equivalents for Panikar's mythos, logos, and Numa.